This is 2OF Entertainment. Hi guys, so time for a look at the classic car market and what would be the best cars to get into in 2024. In fact, I've got 24 cars for 2024 that you should be looking at. And uh, the way that I'm doing this is that obviously Haggerty, which is the company that looks after classic car insurance and valuations, and they also do a lot of car content as well. Um, so they basically every year they put out a bull market list is what they call it and they put out two of these. Um, they put out one for the UK and they put out one for the US. Basically it's their top tips for classic cars to get into uh, during the coming year, so 2024. Now, so Haggerty, obviously, they're looking at their cars that they reckon are the best ones. So they're showcasing cars that are beautiful, but they reckon are poised for appreciation. So I'm going to go through those. There's eight of them for the UK and there's 10 of them for the US. Um, but to take it up to 24, I'm going to add a few of my own selections uh, right at the end of the video. So stay around for those. And I'm going to get into all of that right after this. A brown car guy. Right, so let's start these and we'll begin with the UK list, the UK Haggerty bull market list. And that ranges from the brilliant 2011 Porsche 911 GT3 RS 4.0 to an Austin pedal car. Bit odd, right? Um, but anyway, let's take a look and let's see what they're saying. So first on their list is the 1932 to 1940 Alvis Speed 20 and 25. Now we're starting uh, with that car. These are British pre-war sports cars that combine performance and handling but the thing about them is they don't have the sort of hefty price tag of the sort of more exotic brands of that era there were several body styles they had a straight six engine and uh, you know it's, it's pretty much classic aesthetics and pretty visceral driving experience Haggerty, um, Haggerty's sort of excellent value of a Speed 25 uh, DHC is £81,000. That's about half the price of a Derby Bentley Tourer. So they say the Alvis offers, by comparison, uh, better value compared to you know, those sort of cars from that era. Um, so the value of Alvis models, they're saying, have gone up from about £43,000 to nearly £57,000 in the last 12 months, a climb of about 32%. They say, look at something like a 1938 Alvis Speed 25 SC Drophead Coupe inline six, 3.6 liter, 106 brake horsepower. A fare to concourse price is 52,000 pounds to 99,000 pounds. So now we're moving on to the pedal car. A 1949 to 1971 Austin J40 pedal car. So what's with the pedal car? Why is it on here? Well, apparently there's a renewed interest in classic pedal cars. Probably got something to do with that little race that they do at a famous racing circuit here once a year. Um, and one of the most popular of those is the Austin J40, essentially a miniaturized version of an A40. And um, like I said, they made these from 1949 to 1971. They made over 30,000 of them, but not many actually survive. So prices of some of these are actually as high as buying a real car. We're talking of prices, even for a bad scrappy one that needs restoration, we're talking about 1,500 pounds. And then they go up to a staggering 10,000 pounds for a concourse edition version. So let's get back to cars. And this one is a relatively modern car. It's a 1994 to 1997 Daimler 6. This was the X300 generation XJ and Daimler 6 models. And frankly, they were, I, I reckon, quite a bit better than the slightly awkward square headlight XJ40 that came before and that replaced the XJ before that one. Now this one returned to the curves and the rounded headlights of that classic XJ6. Um, 
I reckon it was a really handsome car. The handling had improved too over the XJ40. Build quality was better and the ride was still fantastic. I remember driving these and I would have one definitely, especially an XJR. And I mean, that would be my choice, but Haggerty is actually recommending something like a, uh, a 1995 Daimler 6, uh, that's a straight 6 with a 4 litre, 237 brake horsepower, and uh, quite reasonable values of £1,600 up to £12,500. Personally, like I said, I'm still going to recommend the late 90s, or, sorry, mid, late to mid 90s um, XJR. Uh, for under £7,000. Go for that one. The 1985 to 1991 Ford Escort RS Turbo. What a thing. This was the next step up from the hugely popular XR3Is of the day. You had to have those in white. But this one had Recaro seats, spotlights, body kit. It was very desirable and apparently it still is. Probably more than it ever was in fact. And uh, let's be honest, if it was good enough for Princess Diana, <laughs> I mean she had one. And here's the thing, the one uh, that she had, her car, that went uh, at auction for well over half a million pounds. So it probably dragged up the values of all of these models in general. In fact, anything that's got an RS or, the, or a Cosworth badge on a Ford at the moment, they are rocketing in value. So for a 1986 Escort RS Turbo, that's a 1.6 liter turbo with 130 brake horsepower, you're looking at around 8,200 pounds up to 38,000 pounds, but snap them up quick. The 1999 to 2010 high revving legendary Honda S2000 Roadster. This was Honda's birthday present to itself at the time, featuring a 240 brake horsepower, two liter four cylinder engine that you just simply had to rev the nuts off. Um, right up to its 9,000 RPM red line. That was the only way to really get the best out of it. And it sounded wicked when you did that. Uh, definitely one of my favorite cars. I'd have one um, and so should you. Haggerty say that uh, a 2009 Honda 2000 can be had between 11,500 to 22,000 pounds. And they reckon that prices are rising somewhere in the region of, well, they, they saw it rise about 20% in 2023. So they anticipate further rises for 2024. So this is a rare bird, a 1969 to 1975 Maserati Indy. And it was kind of like a Ferrari Daytona rival in its day. Why Indy? Because the car actually celebrated two victories at the uh, Indy 500, which Maserati won in 1939 and 1940. So this one had a quad cam V8 powered with a 4.2 liter, uh, putting out about 256 brake horsepower, though it then went up to a 4.7 liter in 1970, that was 286 brake horsepower. And then in 1972 went up to a 4.9 liter and that had 316 brake horsepower. Now just over a thousand of these were made, they're pretty good looking cars, and Haggerty reckons they are actually great value for money. Pre-pandemic values of these were actually as high as £80,000, but they appear to have dropped by just over £10,000 since then. So they reckon that they're set, they, uh, prices are set to appreciate again. And they highlighted like a 1972 Indy 4700 model, ranging from about £39,000 up to £69,000. Next up, the newest car on the list, the 2011 Porsche 911. When I say list, I mean the UK bull market list. The 2011 uh, Porsche 911 GT3 RS 4.0. That's the 997.2 edition, often as we talk about 911s. This is often regarded as peak 911. This car used a 4.0 version of the regular RS model 3.8, so power was up to 493 brake horsepower, and it could do 0 to 62 in under 4 seconds and reach 193 miles per hour, and it had a manual gearbox. Only 600 were made, so it's rare. Not cheap though, because Haggerty says between 290,000 pounds up to 560,000 pounds for this one. Of course, in general, you can't really go wrong with 911s. The more higher spec, the better. Special editions, limited editions, those are the ones to go and look out for. The 1996 to 2003 TBR Cerbera is the final one on the UK uh, bull market list. It's also my favorite TBR. It just looks gorgeous and it's just perfectly proportioned to my eyes. Slightly cartoony, but just brilliant. It was really spectacular, proper British muscle car, great to drive, albeit one that was incredibly prone to falling apart and developing surprising new faults each and every day. And that was just during the week that we had one on test back in the day. Um, every day, we would find a different fault with the car. <laughs> it had TBR's own 4.5 liter V8 with 440 brake horsepower. That gives it plenty of grunt and it makes a great noise. Values are creeping up. 
Hagerty says 3% up in the last 18 months. Values are now between £27,000 and over £41,000. Just make sure that you've got a friendly mechanic on your speed dial. Brown car guy. Right, so we're swiftly moving on to Haggerty's US bull market uh, list. And um, by the way, for this one, I'll be giving the prices in US dollars, as that's how the information has been released. And of course, I mean, this video is aimed at a global audience, so these cars can be anywhere in the world. Um, and don't forget that after that, I will give you my own recommendations to bring the total list up to 24 cars. So we start with the 2008 to 2013 relatively new BMW M3, the E92 Coupe version, um, although they did other ones. But here's the thing about this generation M3, like I said, all available as a saloon and a convertible. Uh, the thing about this M3 though was that it was the only one, the only M3 to get a V8 engine, a four liter V8, about 400 horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque. It had zero to 62 miles per acceleration in 4.5 seconds carbon fiber roof, adjustable rear differential, and they say the values are up by 34%. So you're looking at $51,600 up to $65,800. Although, I might just add that prices in the UK are about half that. So I reckon anybody here should snap them up right now. The only thing I would like to say though, while I really like the idea of a V8 M3, I still think the previous model, the E46 M3, is the more desirable car. And its values are just as high as this later model, at least here in the UK. Although V8, <laughs> the only V8 M3, I mean, it's definitely going to be collectible, isn't it? Here's a handsome beast of a land yacht, the 1965 to 1970 Chevrolet Impala SS. The key thing is the SS, which stands for Super Sport. Now, this generation Impala set sales record, and the 1969 Impala SS is seriously cool. Come on. Its rising popularity might also have something to do with a certain TV show, Supernatural, um, and in that, the lead character does, does drive or did drive, I don't know, if, is it still on that show? I'm not sure. Anyway, he drove a black 1967 Impala, which is very cool. So, though these cars are, are hugely popular also on the customization scene, where they like to do, you know, airbrushing and airbags and crazy suspension and all that sort of stuff, that's the sort of thing that happens to these Impalas. Um, it is a huge car, um, but it is V8 power. And it's yours from a not unreasonable $30,000 up to about $44,500. And because typical muscle cars like the Camaros, Mustangs, etc. are getting out of reach, it's well worth looking into alternative muscle like this. Now here's some vintage cool. Uh, the 1946 to 1950 Chrysler Town and Country. A sort of old saloon that's also kind of half woody. That wood paneling was actually a pass down from its 1941 predecessor and it's certainly different and collectors apparently are really liking them right now so look at paying actually quite big money for these between $81,400 up to $144,000. How about this the 2011 to 2016 Ferrari FF. I remember taking this off-road into a wadi uh, some years ago back in the UAE and a local was coming the other way in an old Toyota Land Cruiser and he just freaked out when he saw me. He saw me with the Ferrari on this on this road and uh, he thought I was lost and he was like no no turn around go back to the road you know. But, uh, but the thing was, this wasn't just any Ferrari. It was a four-seater Ferrari, but more than that, it was a four-wheel drive Ferrari. So I'd just gone down there to get some sort of off-roady kind of photos and stuff like that. And uh, later on, I actually also uh, picked up the one another died for a few days. I picked up the kids from school and instantly became father of the year, of course. So that's also an added bonus. So this thing's actually quite practical. It's quite usable, but it's still a Ferrari. And it's a pretty good looking one. Of course, it's not slow. Um, um, so these are at around $143,000 to $177,000 or about £100,000 to £120,000 here in the UK. How about some 60s Jetson style cool? The 1964 to 1966 Ford Thunderbird. Although I've got to be honest, it's pretty sleek and it does look cool, but it's not as iconic as the classic mid-50s original Ford Thunderbird. Um, however, that does make it affordable. So we're looking at between $41,300 to $56,400 for one of these. 
The next one is the 2000 to 2005 Jaguar XKR. Now this car, I think I have actually featured in my previous videos uh, regarding classics and, and, and cars that you should buy and get. Um, and I've, as I've said before, I really do think they're coming of age. I mean, they were gorgeous and sleek with this incredible fuselage type body kind of reminiscent of the E-Type, which they were a spiritual successor to. That was when they came out. Then they kind of went off for a little bit, but now I think they're coming back. I saw one the other day on my local high road and I was thinking, oh yeah, that is a really sexy looking car again, you know? So, uh, I mean, these are fun. Uh, I mean, they're British muscle cars. They're great Grand Tourers. I always love these. I love driving them and uh, I'd happily rock one. So they're definitely a classic now um, that we are, especially considering the fact that Jaguar don't make this type of car anymore. Even the F-Type is gone. Yeah, that was another one that was actually killed off in 2023. Um, another one of my favorite cars, but unfortunately I missed it off my video. If you saw my video about cars that we lost in 2023, uh, unfortunately I missed that off there because quite frankly, I hadn't realized that they killed it. And I was quite upset when I realized that they, it's gone in 2023. And because only a couple of years before that, I think they'd um, facelifted it. Anyway, that's gone. The XKR uh, is the, the one that the, the Haggerty is mentioning. Uh, I think go for a supercharged V8, that's the XKR. Um, the same platform and under this car it was under the XJS, but you know, they shared this platform across Aston Martin models of the day as well. So this is really a good uh, product. Haggerty says between 26,700 to $38,900. Here in the UK, you're looking at a lot less. 10K will actually buy you a nice one and even a convertible. So you should definitely snap them up. So today we have the Jeep Gladiator, the pickup version of the Jeep Wrangler. But back in the day, there was the 1981 to 1986 Jeep CJ-8 Scrambler. And this car is very cool right now. It's so cool that I probably shouldn't mention that former president Ronald Reagan used to have one. There's a picture to, be, to prove it. Uh, but it, it is appreciating and it's appreciating apparently faster than the CJ7. And you're looking at pretty impressive numbers, $41,400 to $52,600 for one of these. Now, this, of course, is the ultimate poster supercar, the Lamborghini Countach. And Haggerty are highlighting the 1989 25th Anniversary Edition. I mean, this, come on, it's just such an icon, isn't it? Um, it's a beast. It's theater. It's a showstopper. And uh, frankly, it's not that great to drive. And not quick by today's standards, that's for sure. Um, it was the first supercar that I ever reviewed. So it's very special to me. It is an absolute icon and it's a car that will forever be an absolute superstar and it really doesn't matter how it drives. Let's be absolutely honest, right? So Haggerty says $612,500 to $770,000 for one of these. But hey, you can never go wrong investing in one of these cars. The next one is a rare one too. It's the 1997 to 1999 Mitsubishi Pajero Evolution. It was born out of the Mitsubishi brand's dominance in the Paris-Dakar rally. Um, so this was a limited production special. It's been collectible for a while, I think. Um, and I think that in Hag for Haggerty US to highlight it, I think it's particularly down to a, a thing that's happened there where there's a 25 year import exemption rule that's just come in. So these cars now can come in there. So they're talking between 50 to $70,000 for one of these. Uh, you're probably looking about 25,000 pounds to 30,000 pounds here in the UK if you can find one. Now, the last one on the Haggerty US bull market list is also quite a, a little bit of an oddity. It's the 1997 to 2002 Plymouth Prowler. Now, this thing is actually quite amazing. It looks like a crazy classic 1930s hot rod, but it's a relatively modern machine with a 3.5 liter V6 with up to a 250 brake horsepower and an automatic transmission. So basically with this car, you get all the crazy style and the looks of that era of crazy hot rods, but actually it's a perfectly drivable everyday car that you could go touring in, you could go to shops in. A, a Gen Xs, uh, my Gen, let's be honest, are the ones that are really getting into this now, say Haggerty, and they reckon $34,800 up to $45,500. If you can find one, just snap it up. Brown car guy. Right then, so that's the Haggerty list uh, done, but let's get into some bonus metal that I think are actually going to be um, ones that you should be watching, uh, or actually you should just be buying. 
if you're going to listen to me, you should just buy them. And these are the ones, and we'll start with, well, we'll start with this one. It was built as a collaboration between three Italian manufacturers. This 1990, 1987 to 1998 Alfa Romeo 164 was built alongside the Fiat Chroma, the Saab 9000, and the Lancia Thema. For the theme of the Ferrari engine version is the most interesting, but they're quite rare and very expensive. Um, but I reckon out of this, out of this cars, the cars, these, these uh, with collaborative cars, what were there four of them, right? Um, the most desirable in terms of style and performance to my eyes was always the Alfa Romeo 164. Uh, it's a stunning wedge-shaped design with a really low drag coefficient. I reckon it was definitely the best looking. Although, the, to be honest, the Saab was actually quite nice as well. Um, the 3 liter V6 and the Alpha is the one to get, especially the 24 valve version. So try and get that one. Uh, unfortunately, there's very few around, so you'll have to look far and wide for them to get a good one. But you'd better snap them up fast if you can. Um, prices range for about, from about £7,000 up to about £25,000 for the very best examples. Ideally, Try and find, like I said, that 24 valve, but the Q4 version, that's with the all-wheel drive. The 1977 to 1986 Cadillac Fleetwood. It was a majestic and imperious thing, let's be honest. I remember growing up in Saudi Arabia in the 1980s, uh, and these were these were right up there alongside Rolls-Royce. I mean, you know, this was the boss, you know. What a presence, what opulence. And the values of these are actually going up a little, um, simply because there's not many left now, um, at least not good ones, because they're all pretty scrappy ones when you go out looking for them. Um, so look around, find a good one. You're looking at between $15,000 up to $25,000 for the best example. I think that's well worth it. Don't wait, get one now. Now you move on to Lotus, the famous sports car company that previously was dedicated to lightweight, fun uh, sports cars. But two years ago, they discontinued the Elise, the Exige, and the Evora, and they, and they replaced it with one car, the Amira, which it has declared will be its last combustion engine car. And since then, they've already come out with their first all-electric, first SUV. So um, that's where the things are going. The Amira is still there. Um, it's not exactly cheap. We're talking about 60, 70, 80 grand. Now, the Elise, which came out in 1996, is plentiful and relatively affordable, but not for long, I reckon. Now, all three of those cars, the Elise, the Exige, the Aurora, I think that they all become collectible and cherished, and they'll be considered like the last real Lotuses in a sense. They're all brilliant, and they're all fantastically fun to drive. But I think the Elise will really stand out because of a couple of reasons. It was the car that really sort of turned around Lotus's fortune. Um, um, the first gen is a car that is already, the S1, is already seeing uh, values lift for the best examples. But, the, but it's also a great fun car, so I reckon you buy any of these and you'll have one of the best driving experiences that was available in the 21st century. And I say was, because I think, think there'll be many cars to match it uh, coming out in the near future. It is definitely one of my very, very favorite cars. I would have it in a heartbeat and uh, I think it's an appreciating asset. S1s that a lot of people go for, you can look at those from £15,000 to £30,000. And S2, you're talking about £15,000 to £35,000. And an S3, you're talking about £30,000 up to £55,000. Now, the original with the Rover engine, like I said, is much loved. But personally, I would recommend the Toyota engine uh, 111R from about the late 2000s, I think, for about £30,000. Try to get one of those. So it almost pains me to say this, but the latest 2023 Mercedes C63 AMG is a turbocharged hybrid four-cylinder motor. Yes. I mean, okay, it's a very powerful car. It can do 0 to 60 in under 3.5 seconds, but come on, no V8? I remember reviewing the W204 series Mercedes C-Class, the C63 AMG in the UAE. It's a full fat, naturally aspirated V8 built by AMG. In fact, this C63, that Gen S63 was re-engineered completely by AMG. So it wasn't just a bolt-on performance special. The front suspension, for example, was from the CLK63 Black series. It had quick responsive steering and they fitted it with traction control that could be fully turned off and believe me, I did test that. Um, 450 brake horsepower to start with, but I think the later 2011 onwards model, they got another 30 horsepower. So uh, 480 we're talking about. Um, and we're talking about zero to 62 miles per hour in under four seconds. But more than that, 
uh, thanks to its uh, had a super smooth speed shift seven speed transmission. This thing was a real Jekyll and Hyde kind of car because it was comfy and uh, a calm executive cruiser one minute and then you selected the sports modes and you turned off traction control and it just turned into a nutter hooligan machine. Uh, plus it sounded absolutely epic. I love it. Uh, and can you believe that you can actually get these now for as little as 15,000 pounds? <laughs> and even the slightly better, the, the 30 brake horsepower extra 2011 on models, um, we're still talking from under 20,000 pounds up to about 30K for the best examples. And, uh, but 50K for the final edition 507 uh, model, which had 507 brake horsepower and reduced weight. But now that the Mercedes V8 is dead in the modern Mercs, um, I see values of all of the classic V8 versions of the AMGs going up. Now the W204 C63, I reckon, is one of the best. So go get one, keep it, and enjoy it for years to come. The 1976 to the 2023 Ford Fiesta. Now this is a car that was killed off last year with so many great cars, uh, as I've already mentioned, and values of these have already started going up. It's definitely gonna become a collectible. We are already seeing 1980s XR2Is from five to 15,000 pounds. Even good original Mark Ones is from 76 are 10 to 15,000 pounds. And any, in fact, nice examples of any cars from the 1980s are already um, showing up as 2,000 to over 5,000 pounds, which is way higher than you would expect for cars of that age. I reckon the first, second, and the third generation cars are the ones to go for. Um, and of course, any sporty models. So any XR models, uh, type models, any RS type models, just buy them, snap them up. Best thing to do, especially for the older cars, buy the best ones you can buy because restoring these cars right now is probably not feasible. So find the best kept examples you can and then just look after them. They are definitely gonna go up in value. Right, so we come to the final car on the list and it's another one that was killed off last year, the 2008 to 2023 Dodge Challenger. Um, particularly we're talking SRT, Hellcat and Demon. Now, I mean, like I said, we lost a lot of great cars in 2023, uh, including the trio of awesomeness from Dodge and Chrysler. I mean, of course, the Chrysler 300C, um, particularly the SRT, I love that car. The Dodge Charger, again, SRT, again, I love that car. Both of those are achingly painful uh, losses to the true petrol head. But the one that probably hurts the most is this now iconic and legendary modern old school muscle car, Marvel, all action superhero of a thing, the Dodge Challenger SRT. Now, with these now not available new and considering the fact that the sales of these things were still pretty buoyant right up to the end. People, were, there was still demand, there's still demand for them now. So I don't reckon that we're going to see uh, much, if any, depreciation on, on these cars, particularly on the most desirable versions like, as I mentioned, the Hell, they, they, all, they want to be the SRT, but, they, but particularly the Hellcat and the Demon models, especially the Mental Demon, because that car is just utterly bonkers, um, and the wide body ones as well. Price-wise, you're looking at early SRTs from well under $30,000 up to about $50,000. But you want a Hellcat, that starts from $40,000, goes over $300,000 for the Red Eye Edition. And for the Demon, you're talking $120,000 up to, again, well over $300,000 for the very best examples. So I would say buy one of these, keep it safe. It will definitely be a future classic. And plus, take it out every day and treat yourself to one hell of an epic burnout. Dodge Challenger Hellcat. This is a mighty machine. It makes me go all Shakespeare. Cry havoc! And let's slip the dogs of war! <laughs> so there you go, those were my uh, choices uh, in addition to the Haggerty lineup. So there are 24 classic cars that you should buy in 2024. If you think I've missed any cars, I'd love to hear your choices. Put them in the comments below now.